Tonight, bail granted to the man accused of murdering a grandfather at Peterborough last weekend. And locals urge to check their heating appliances as we head into winter. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. Bail's been granted to the man accused of allegedly murdering Joel David in Peterborough last weekend. Peter Adams will be released on home detention to a Port Augusta address. Dominic Beaton has more. Warabra man Peter Adams appeared in court today for the second time this week. This afternoon applying to be bailed on home detention. He's been held in custody this week accused of murdering 49-year-old grandfather Joel David. Police were called to a disturbance at Railway Terrace at Peterborough at 1am last Sunday, where the Onkaparinga Hills man died at the scene despite attempts by paramedics to revive him. Mr Adams appeared in Port Pirie's Magistrate Court via video link from Port Augusta, where he is currently being held, with members of his family present in the chamber. He's been granted bail on the conditions that he'll be held in home detention at a residence in Port Augusta. The prosecution said its next move will be to work with his defence and discuss the evidence relevant to the case. Mr Adams will not be able to leave the residence until his next court date at Port Augusta's Magistrate Court on the 19th of February 2020 for a preliminary hearing. Wallaroo's radiological services should be opened on weekends and after hours, according to the deputy coroner. He's made the recommendations this morning during an inquest into the death of a Kadena man in 2016. 81-year-old Gray Chapman died in the Royal Adelaide Hospital from organ failure after sustaining multiple rib fractures from a ladder fall. Deputy coroner Anthony Shapel says the signs of deterioration should have signified he required care at the Wallaroo Hospital and he should have been admitted to the RA at an earlier time. A 50-year-old learner driver and his 40-year-old supervisor have both tested positive to cannabis in Port Lincoln. Patrols pulled the vehicle over in Liverpool Street on Wednesday, with both returning a positive reading. The samples are being tested, but police say they're expected to take action against both. It was one of five drug driving incidents in the town over the past week. A multi-generational farming family say they're devastated by a government compensation offer, nearly six years after their property near Wyler was acquired by the Department of Defence. The Nicholsons are fighting for justice for Rapina Station, which was a part of the family for nearly 100 years. We found out about it in late 2012 when it was um, uh, they put the acquisition notice in the paper. Department of Defence claimed it for the Kaltana base expansion. After eight years of negotiations, they were forced out in 2013. They haven't been given sufficient compensation to be able to continue uh, full growing on the scale that we were. So uh, we're really disappointed. Nicholson's are appealing, saying the government offer is less than half their claim. We tried to get a meeting with the Minister of Finance and uh, that was declined. And they have support from their local MP. I will be working with my colleagues um, to try and bring about uh, a fundamental change to the way uh, that this compulsory acquisition process works. The Department of Finance says it doesn't comment on individual cases but always seeks to offer a fair price. While the Department of Defence says the expansion of the Kaltana training area was necessary. The six year wait for the Commonwealth's offer has been emotionally and financially costly for the Nicholson family. Throughout this time the wool industry went through a boom period in which they missed out on. A fair compensation for, 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 for the property that we've lost so that we could continue farming. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Air Peninsula residents are being warned of an upcoming king tide predicted to hit the region next Wednesday. They're caused by strong winds and low air pressure elevating the sea level above normal height. The Natural Resource Department says they want the community to take photos of the tide so they can document the phenomenon. The photos give us uh, a record over time of how uh, high tide events actually affect our, our coastlines uh, and with sea level rise predicted to, to increase over the next 50 years. It'll give us an idea of how our coastlines may look in the future. 
The king tide is expected to peak in Streaky Bay, Port Lincoln and Wyala. As the cold weather sets in across the region, focus is turning towards how to keep warm. But fire authorities are warning people to be vigilant about the potential risks in their homes. For volunteers in the MFS, this is their busiest time of the year, with the calls for assistance already happening. This blaze yesterday in Port Augusta sparked by a faulty solar panel. On arrival we found an isolator switch had uh, shorted out. While this fire, like many others, ignited by accident, authorities say people need to take steps to reduce the risk. We really need to be as, as, as vigilant during the winter as we do through summer. Firefighters say heating appliances are the main culprits in the cause. They're urging the public to test all their devices. If uh, the wiring looks suspect, get an electrician to look at it um, or you know, buy a new one. Just make sure that they're not charging mobile phones and tablets on beds and things like that. But those on the front line say the number one priority for households is working smoke alarms. They are the first warning uh, device for, for a fire in the house. Uh, and, they, and they do work, so it's, it's incredibly important that homeowners check their smoke detectors regularly. Make sure that you've changed the batteries out. Um, remember that smoke detectors only have a 10-year life expectancy. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Port Lincoln's main water pipeline gets a lick of paint and a broken hill man a million dollars better off after a lot of win. Welcome back. SA Water and the local bungalow community have teamed up to decorate Port Lincoln's main water pipeline. The artwork tells the history and culture of the local Indigenous community. It's a local Indigenous story told through 40 metres of pipeline, an artwork celebrating bungalow culture as part of Reconciliation Week. It's really stimulated a lot of conversation, especially about fresh water and um, the relationship between um, Indigenous people, in particular the bungalow people, and community and fresh water. SA Water enlisting the help of the traditional landowners to paint the pipe. It's pretty striking, it's amazing, so hopefully we'd like to extend this as the years go on if that's, if that's a possibility. It took three bungalow artists just over two days to complete this stretch of pipeline. The artwork telling the story of the serpent and the importance of water for the local community. Uh, we have the serpent, he's the guardian and he guards the uh, fresh water. It goes from waterhole to waterhole. Um, and that's where we have to look after the fresh water. It's the second piece of artwork created by the local bungalow community this year, following a mural painted up Tumby Bay. We've got some really good bungalow um, artists in the community and a lot of uh, people that are wanting to work with the bungalow people, so we'd be really looking forward to um, being able to showcase uh, our art. Nathan Rector, 7 Spencer Golf News. A Broken Hill miner says he won't be working night shift anymore after winning a million dollars in the lottery. Lucky guy. The man took home Wednesday night's Division 1 prize after buying a ticket from the South News Agency. Been here 17 years. It's the third one we've had, but it's I think it's about 12 to 15 years since the last one. So yeah. to change someone's life is still pretty overwhelming, yeah. The winner, who's chosen to remain anonymous, has been at the mines for 43 years. He says he'll be looking forward to the next chapter of his life. Still in Broken Hill and City Council have slammed vandals who've trashed a recently revitalised community area. Patton Park has been targeted, causing significant damage to the facility. A popular place for Broken Hill families, now a target for petty vandals. To find that... Some people have been going there, uh, ongoingly vandalising the area. It's such a disappointment. Patton Park recently underwent a major facelift with council building a new playground, adding more amenities and smart technology. But over the past few weeks, the new features have been targeted by vandals, leaving council to pick up the pieces and count the cost. Certainly reactivated Patton Street in terms of the economy there. And that's why we did it. We wanted to make sure that... Patton Park was rejuvenated. The damage list includes graffiti on toilet doors, internet receivers smashed, panels on the playground slide kicked in and even bark chips in the bathroom basins. Council says it's reviewing footage from CCTV cameras. What's 
you know, absolutely comforting to me as mayor is the fact that across the community, everybody is outraged that this has happened. If they do hear of anything or have seen anything, sus, um, please call either the Broken Hill Police Station or call Crime Stoppers. Patrick Roenke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. New figures show Port Augusta is the state's worst spot for collisions between vehicles and animals. Two other regional locations also made the list, which is keeping local crash repairers busy. Travelling at night along an outback road, then this. Whoa! A close call with a kangaroo. It's something drivers in Port Augusta experience all too often. They blend into the surroundings, so they're very hard to see. They will actually go totally blind and run into you or run across the road. And now the numbers prove it. Looking in from a South Australia perspective, Port Augusta was revealed as the most common area across the state for animal collisions. Amy Insurance analysed more than 9,000 animal accident claims, with Port Augusta taking out the unwanted top position, followed by Hawker and Borough in the mid-north. In 87% of cases, it was the marsupial on our national emblem causing the damage. Because of the drought. And of course they come in onto the road, trying to get the moisture off the road. It comes as no shock to local crash repairers. Easy 80% of our work. There's nothing uncommon for us to have every job in the workshop every week to be kangaroo related. And if you do hit one, you better have your checkbook ready. An average repair bill on a kangaroo repair could be anywhere from seven to $8,000 minimum. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Our experts will preview the weekend footy. And Louise will have the weekend weather details. Hello again. A while a couple celebrating their anniversary was shocked when a flash mob of dance students joined them at the Air Hotel last night. The couple's friends organised a surprise to commemorate their 10-year wedding anniversary and Elsie Smith's 90th birthday. I was shocked. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah. I can't believe it. I thought, look at the They're dance. beautiful, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah, lovely kids. We didn't yeah. expect that. <laughs> And both say they're not quite sure how to top their celebrations next year. Good stuff there. A team of talented Broken Hill dancers is travelling to Adelaide this weekend. They'll be part of the Can Dance for a Cure show, with their performance dedicated to a friend who lost their battle with cancer. Some last minute practice before taking the stage. They're very excited, but they're very nervous. For most of them, it's their first time performing to such a large audience. It's the first time a Broken Hill group has performed at the Can Dance for a Cure event. The girls have been working on their routine for three months. I'm nervous to perform about the amount of people that's going to be there, but excited for the experience. Yeah, I think we're all a bit excited to go away and perform. Can Dance for a Cure is an annual show made up of over 30 dancing in high schools across New South Wales and South Australia. Over the 10 years it's been running, it's raised close to $200,000 for cancer research. For the Broken Hill Girls, it'll be a very special performance, honouring the memory of teammate Amali Elston. She passed away from paediatric brain cancer, um, so we're just trying to do our bit to raise awareness and to raise funds towards Cancer Institute research. She was one of my best friends and I think it'll be nice to contribute something to her. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Golf News. It's now time to take a look at the weekend's footy action. Here's our experts with their tips. Hello and welcome to round six of SGL football. This round we start with Port taking on the lines at Port Pirie's Memorial Oval on Saturday. Port are yet to register a win and won't find it easy against the competition leading Lions. I'm tipping the Lions. Up in Port Augusta on Saturday, it's Central Oval Solly at Central Oval in their first trip up the highway. When these two met in round one, it was Central the winners over a wayward Solly. I'm tipping Sollys. On Sunday in Port Augusta, it's South taking on West. I'm tipping south. And eight of Isla football tonight at Bennett Oval at Central Isla versus Runa Bay. Centrals have only lost two games for the year, both to top team West and both only just. They'll be too strong for the Bays. Saturday it's West Isla versus South Isla. West Isla's Shannon Winders will become the game's record holder at that club. Fantastic effort by him and West will win this easily. And finally, see Rapina versus North Isla. North are going along very nicely, third position on the ladder. I think they'll cause some damage and they should have a comfortable win. 
Welcome to Port Ligon Footy Tips. We kick things off at Centenary Oval where Waybacks are hosting Tasmans. I'm tipping Tasmans to win this one and win this one by six goals. In the next game, we've got Boston's hosting Lincoln South at Paul Oval. I'm tipping South to win this one and win this one by four goals. In the last game and match of the round, we've got Mallee Park hosting Marble Range. The winner of this game is going to move into second spot. I think Marble Range might be too strong and win this one by three goals. And here's Louise with the weekend weather forecast. Good evening. It was a mixed bag across our region today. Temperatures were in the mid-teens. Port Augusta was sunny and 17 degrees. Wyala and Port Piri 16. Showers in Port Lincoln and 16 too. Broken Hill 14 and 16 and showers in Adelaide. On the satellite now, patchy cloud over southern South Australia is causing a few showers. Skies are clearer in the north, though temperatures are cold at night. Southerly winds tomorrow reaching 15 knots, seas at a metre. Sunrise is at 15 tomorrow morning with sunset at 5.19. Dry and partly cloudy tomorrow, Port Augusta reaching 18, while a 16, Port Lincoln cloudy and 17, Woodna and Corn both partly sunny and 17, Broken Hill 15, Clare 13, Cleve 16, Adelaide some patchy cloud and 16 degrees. Looking ahead to the next four days now, Port Lincoln showers and 17 on Sunday, cloudy Monday before the rain returns. Tuesday, Cleve will be partly cloudy with temperatures in the mid-teens. Similar conditions in Woodna, 18 Sunday, 16 Monday and Tuesday. Wyala will be cloudy but dry for the next four days. Port Augusta can expect the same 18 on Saturday and Sunday, 15 on Monday. Showers and 17 on Sunday in Kadena before partly cloudy conditions on Monday and on Tuesday. Port Perry can expect showers Sunday before a dry start to the working week. Cool Clare 13 on Sunday and just 11 on Monday, so rug up. Broken Hill will remain dry and partly cloudy. That's all for tonight's weather. Have a lovely weekend. Good night. Thanks Louise, and that's the local news for tonight and the week. Just a reminder, you can keep up to date with us on our Facebook, Twitter and YouTube pages. Just search for Spencer Golf Nightly News. I'm John Hunt, on behalf of the team, thanks so much for your company. From all of us here, we hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy Friday Night Footy, good night.